Yo, how's it going everybody and welcome back to this Mantine course and in today's video we're going to be learning about how to work with the time input and time range input components. This is what we're going to be building right here. It's incredibly styled uh, two component inputs. The first one is our time input where we're able to insert our time in a 12, 12 hour format. So you can do either AM or PM. Uh, we have an icon that's colored. Uh, we have some background color for our input. We have a basic title and a basic description. And at the very bottom here, we have a time range input where we're able to specify a certain time as well. Without further ado, let's get into it. So I'll open up the documentation for time input. The link to this is in the description down below. The very first thing that we can see right here is the users tab. This is a simple time input where you actually have to manually put in uh, the time that's available to you. Uh, in my opinion, this is a pretty solid component. If you compare it to something like the Material UIs, um, where you have a little clock that opens up, I would say that that one, from a user perspective, in my opinion, is a little bit better, but this gets the job done 100%. So in the Usage tab, you have a simple label where we can add it right at the top right here. It says, what time is it now? And we can input a time if we wanted. So we can do, if I go to the first one, we can do 23, 4, or we can do the 12 hour clock if you wanted. After that, we have the controlled prop right here. This allows us to actually tell what time that the user has selected. So we can use the value and on change, similar to how in the last video we talked about the calendar. This will tell us what the actual value of time the user selected. After that, we have the width seconds prop. This basically just adds a width seconds. So if we wanted a specific time, 430, 59 seconds, we're able to do that with this prop. After that is a 12 hour format. This is the format that a lot of people in North America, not too sure about South America, are used to. The 12 hour clock, so it goes from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. instead of 24 hours, which to me doesn't make sense, but it is what it is. So we can easily be able to put in our time. So we can't put in 23, it goes up to a maximum of 12 and up to 60 minutes. After that, we have the input props. Inside of here, we can actually make a live uh, time input if you wanted. We can have a label, our description if we wanted, an error if something is wrong, the different types of variants. So we have default, filled, and unstyled. Uh, if you wanted a radius or no radius, different sizing, what kind of formats you want, 12 hours or 24, what second to make it disabled or not, to make it clearable or not. And so below this live usage, we have our code if we wanted to use it. After that, we have the width icon. We're able to actually display an icon inside of our time input if you wanted. In this case, they're using the clock icon right here on the left side. After that, we have the invalid state and error. So let's say we wanted to display an error or something that's invalid and the user, let's say we wanted the user to only select a time between 2.30 and 4.30, but they selected something like six. We want to display an error and we're able to do that with this prop right here. After that, we have the disabled state. This is pretty, self-explanatory, you can't actually edit the time input when it's disabled. After that, we have the input ref. And this is really cool, I've never seen this before, is you're actually able to provide hours, minutes, seconds, labels to make input visible to screen readers. And if we scroll at the very top, we have our component props and styles API. Inside the component props, we're able to select what kind of props we wanna target, the type, and the description of each of these props. And there's a lot of them. We're not gonna cover every single one of them, but we will be using some of them. After that, we have the styles API. This is really cool. There's a lot of styles you can apply to this throughout the actual, uh, out of the box. And you have the name, the static selector, and the description of what each of these items are. And you have an example right here of every single thing basically colored as red. Now, before we do get our hands dirty with time inputs, I wanna talk about time range input. This is really similar to the calendar range input where you're able to just select a, in this case, a time input between two ranges uh, right now what this is doing is taking the current, well, my current time and displaying it inside of this input right here. It has a label and it has a value on change as well as a clearable X right there. You can see how it is um, if it was empty. After that, we have the width seconds. Same thing, it just has seconds applied to it. After that, we have the actual time range props and time range component uses the same props as time input component with a difference in value on change and default value with some additional props like label separator. And if we go to the very bottom, again, this is really cool. Uh, we're actually able to provide hours, minutes, and seconds labels to make inputs visible to screen readers. Now let's go ahead and actually work with these two components. 
so I've opened up the app that we've been building in the last couple of videos in the series and uh, this is the calendar example the link to this is in the description below if you want to check it out uh, the first thing I want to do is we're just going to set up our route for our time input example so I'll create a new file inside of my components folder and I'll call it time input example .tsx. and I'm just going to go ahead and copy my calendar example and paste it into here just so we have some basic code and I'll change the name to be time input example like so and I'm going to save it inside of my app shell I'll copy this route and I'll call it we're going to direct it to a path of time input page and the element is time input example like so go to the very top right here inside of our nav links I'm going to copy this last nav link paste it and it's going to direct to time input page and the actual text will be time input page and if we go into our app you should see our time input page right here and it's just the exact same calendar page awesome now let's go ahead and mess around with the time input components all right now i'm back in the app and what i'm going to do is go into my time input example and i'm going to go ahead and clear out all this information since we don't need any of it get rid of this right here as well as this i'll leave the use effect there since we can test out our uh, values that are being changed and what I'm going to do is firstly make a const uh, time input and set time input is equal to use state and let's just do new date like that now if I go down what I'll do is inside of here I'll make the time input and I'll import it from man time dates I'll give it a value equal to time oops time input and on change we want to change it to be set time input basically initially what will happen is it'll display the new date value which is my current time and on change will show set time input so just so that we can actually see some data being changed I'll do console.log time input now let's go back into our app and very first thing, let me zoom in a little bit. We'll see right here we have 1911. I think that's 711. If I go in my console, we should see, oops, if I change this, we can see our time being changed right there. So we have 1952. Oh, whoops, I just realized I was just typing in more numbers and it maxes out at 59 seconds. So I'll put in one here and we can see the time change right there. Let me make this a little bit, whoops, let me make this a little bit bigger. So we see right here it's 101.52. So we'll do three at four. And if I get out of it, we'll see three, four, 52. All right, now let's add a little bit of styling to this. So what I'm gonna do is go back into my app and I will do icon. And since we're absolutely crazy, I'm gonna put in the weirdest icon ever since we're absolutely insane. GitHub logo icon. And you see a GitHub logo icon. All right, now let's add a little bit of styling to this because this is looking really basic. So if we go back into the documentation, I'm in the styles API of time input, time input, and I scroll down, we can see all of the actual types of selectors that we can select from. And here's an example of them using each of them to color everything red. So if I go back into the app, what I'll do is I'll do styles, curly braces, smooth curly braces, theme, arrow function, smooth curly, really curly. I feel like I'm losing all credibility when I say <laughs> smooth curly and really curly. But um, let's say we want to edit the icon, the GitHub icons color. So all I have to do is icon, curly braces. And I'll do like uh, color, let's say we'll make it uh, theme dot colors dot. Let's be crazy here since it's not the actual GitHub icon logo. We'll do orange at the seventh index. And if we look at it, oh my goodness, it's orange at the seventh index. I'm trying to zoom in. It won't let me zoom in. Hang on. There we go. We can see it's orange at the seventh index. Now, just for a little bit more styling, what I'll do is we'll edit the actual color of this uh, text field right here. So to do that, all we have to do is you have to call the um, I think it's called filled variant since that's the one that we're using and I'll give it a background color of uh, let's do theme dot colors 
oops, not color scheme, colors dot blue at the fifth index. Let's see how that looks. Whoa, that looks disgustingly amazing. Now let's quickly add a description and a label for these time input. It's really simple. All you have to do is oops, label this is our title basically. This is a whoops. This is a label. And if you want a description, all you have to do is description is equal to this is a description. You can add whatever you want in the text field. So if I go into it, we'll see a whoops. If I go into it, you'll see a label, a title, and a description. Now let me show you guys how to work with the time range input. It's exactly the same as the calendar range input. You have to define two values, two different ranges initially. Um, you can either have them as null or new date, whatever you want. In this case, what they're doing, they created two variables, now and then, where in now is equal to the current time, then is equal to the current time plus 30 minutes. And they have a label, same thing value on change, and a clearable option. So the way you actually use this, underneath my time input, I'll just do time range input and import it. And I'll do value and I'll do on change. All right, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and copy this use state variable as well as these two variables right here. And I'll paste it at the very top underneath my other use state, like so. Let's go ahead and import dayjs. And let's put in our set value inside of the on change, And we'll put in value inside of our value prop right there. Now if I go into the app, alrighty, we have an error and it says it is not assignable to type date or null or date or null. We just need to actually define the type. So I'll scroll to the very top. And instead of the use state, I'll make alligator braces. And I'll do an array block. And inside of there, the first parameter will be a date. And the other parameter will also be a date. So now if we go into our app, we'll see that it works. We have the current time as well as time 30 minutes from now. And the styling is the exact same thing. If I wanted to do, uh, let's go back into the app. If I wanted to just go ahead and copy this style prop right here and paste it into my time range input, like so, we'll see that we have the exact same styles. Awesome, so that concludes this tutorial. And by now you should have a pretty good understanding of how to work with the time input and time range input components, how to add labels, description, and how to style it. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one.